So Last Night in Soho was just released here in Australia because unfortunately we get our movies here really late sometimes, but sometimes we also get them a day early. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. But anyway, so this is a thriller, this is a horror, this is a mystery, this is a drama. Honestly, I would definitely go more towards drama, thriller, even sort of action at times, like it definitely doesn't come across mainly as a horror movie. But having said that, I still feel like this was the best horror movie of 2021. Not that that was really a hard competition because we haven't really had a lot of good horror this year. Anyway, so I knew that I'd like this because it definitely gave across some very strong Alfred Hitchcock vibes and I'm a huge Hitchcock fan so I was fairly certain that I was going to enjoy this and fortunately I was right. So our main character Eloise is played by Thomas and Mackenzie from Jojo Rabbit which is a great movie that I highly recommend that you check out if you haven't. So basically she lives in the English countryside with her grandmother because both of her parents have passed away. And everybody in this movie keeps making fun of her for living in the countryside. But seriously, look at this place. Like, this is my dream place to live. It looks so beautiful. Anyway, so she wants to be a fashion designer. So she has to go to London so that she can study fashion. So basically, when she gets there, she doesn't really feel like she's fitting in. And she's really obsessed with all things retro and she sees ghosts. So basically, she reminded me a lot of myself. Like, I don't see ghosts, you know, I'm not psychic. I'm just saying, like, with the whole hard time at college, loving all of that retro stuff, I felt like, you know, I could really relate to her character a lot in this movie. So anyway, basically, she isn't having a good time with her roommate, so she goes to find a place to live on her own and she ends up renting a room from this old lady, Miss Collins, played by Diana Rigg, who is that sassy old lady from Game of Thrones who I really liked her character. She was really entertaining. And this was the last thing that she acted in before she died, unfortunately. So, yeah, she was a really great actress. So I'll talk more about the technical stuff like cinematography a bit later and I really enjoyed all of that stuff but I love to talk about more the story and the themes and really deconstruct the characters and their motivations. That's what I'm really interested in talking about when I do reviews. So anyway, basically we see Eloise renting this room and she's really happy she starts having these dreams of this ghost, this woman that lived in the 60s, played by Anya Taylor-Joy's character. I mean, by the actress, Anya Taylor-Joy. And she is an amazing actress. She just steals every scene that she's in. She isn't the main focus of the movie. It's definitely Thomason. She's definitely the lead actress in this movie. But at the same time... You know, she's just not on the same level as Anya. Anya is just on a completely different level to her. And let's just be honest, you can just really tell it. Like, she just steals every scene she's in, definitely. So basically, she plays this character, Sandy, who wants to be some sort of club singer. You know, how they have all those, like, jazz club singers, I guess. So basically... Eloise starts having dreams where she is Sandy and she's been transported back to that time. And, you know, the one thing that I will say I didn't like about Eloise's character, well, the actress that played her, is her accent. She had this really thick London or English accent that, as an Australian, I completely understand. I had people telling me that I'm really hard to understand at times, but... She was also pretty hard to understand for me as an Australian, so I don't know if any other people had that problem. 
So I really love English accents, even though I find them a bit hard to understand at times. And I especially like them on men. So talking about English men, we have the very handsome Matt Smith, who is from Doctor Who and The Crown. So he plays this talent agent who says that he wants to help Sandy and help her make it as a singer in the clubs in London. But he has ulterior motives. He basically is a pimp, a sex trafficker. You know, he just wants to traffic her out to all these men against her will. So yeah, there is some very heavy themes in here. So just letting you know. Um, so anyway... You know, it's very true to life because that stuff still happens all the time in Hollywood. So, yeah, it was good that Edgar Wright decided to sort of shine a light on those issues. And it's such a powerful message that's still so relevant today, which is part of the point of the movie showing that things haven't changed that much after all. Like we see Eloise in present times getting harassed by like a cab driver and stuff. And then going to the past or dreaming of the past and seeing everything that's happening there. And it's like, yeah, we still have things that we need to do to make it a better place for women in the entertainment industry because there's still so many of them that come and end up getting exploited by, you know, talent agents and people like that. And yeah, I haven't seen one single review on YouTube at all talking about like the themes of, you know, exploitation and abuse and rape. And, you know, I get it. I understand it's a very uncomfortable thing to talk about. But at the same time, it's such a central theme of the movie and it's what drives Sandy's character to do what she does. So basically Sandy is in her apartment building getting all of her gentleman callers. So basically these men, you know, it's not really outright stated whether they knew that she was there against her will, but at the same time it was made very clear that they were part of the entertainment industry, men who could help her, you know, move up the ladder in the industry. So it was a pretty safe bet to say that they did know what was going on with her anyway. So she gets assaulted a bunch of times and she talks about how the men, she tries to make them faceless. So the ghosts and the CGI are all like CGI faceless ghost men. And yeah, I just didn't find it scary at all. So basically she says to her pimp, Jack, I want out and he's not happy to hear that so he threatens her with a knife and she fights back in self-defense and kills him and that's when she starts to move from prey to predator that's when she moves from you know just self-defense trying to survive to actually taking her anger out on all of these men so she kills all of her gentleman callers and she hides their bodies in the apartment building under the floorboards which I don't know if you all noticed but basically in present day when Eloise moves into the apartment building and I'll talk more about this later but we find out that the old lady the landlord lady is actually Sandy so Sandy says in the present day to Eloise be careful this place might smell like garlic and she says that there's like an Italian restaurant next door or something and that's why it smells like garlic. So do dead bodies smell like garlic? This is what I'm wondering now. Like, do I have to avoid Italian food now? So there's so many powerful themes in this movie of exploitation, of the cycle of violence and hate, how evil breeds evil hate breeds hate it's like a vicious cycle that just keeps going and also not romanticizing the past because we see in the present time Eloise is very much romanticizing the past at first she thinks that the 60s was this magical perfect time and then when she actually sees with her own eyes what happens the seedy underbelly of London 
you know, she starts to take off those rose-coloured glasses and see that the past isn't always better, but yes, there are things about it, the fashion and stuff, the music, which we can still appreciate, but, you know, we shouldn't over-romanticise it. So one thing that I noticed, and I don't know if Edgar Wright did this on purpose, but when Eloise starts to change her look, her hair, her makeup to reflect Sandy, like she's obviously doing it to look like Sandy, but at the same time, I feel like it's very symbolic of what she's going through at different stages of the movie and her loss of innocence. This is definitely a coming of age story as well as a revenge story, action, mystery, horror. This is a lot of things in one movie, but it works. Anyway, so the big reveal is Sandy is still alive. She's played by the old lady landlord that we met earlier in the movie. So Sandy has been a bear all along. So basically Eloise had gone to the police and they obviously think that she's crazy, but still... Sandy is worried that they could start investigating Verba, so she tries to poison Eloise by giving her some tea with poison or something in it, I assume. Anyway, then a fire starts, and somewhere in this time period, we see Sandy really look at Eloise and see that this is somebody who wants to help her, who understands what she's been through. So instead of trying to kill her, she basically says, go save yourself, save your boyfriend who was also there. And he just didn't really feel like anything more than a plot device. That's why I'm not talking about him a lot. He just didn't really feel like a real character. Like she does so much to this poor guy and he keeps coming back for more. And anyway, so basically there's a fire. She manages to escape. And Sandy ends up burning along with all of her victims and it's a very bittersweet ending. To be honest, a lot of people are saying that they didn't like the ending, but I actually thought it was good. I feel like it showed that, you know, this isn't a black and white villain. This is somebody who has a lot of shades of grey and you can sympathise with her while still at the same time realising how unhealthy her actions were and that she didn't deal with what happened to her in a, a good way but still realising that she's someone who isn't necessarily evil, you know? She's just someone who just got mistreated so much that she eventually snapped and, yeah, it's really sad in the end and bittersweet but it felt like it was a... It was a good fitting for the end of the movie, I personally think. So we see at the end of the movie that Sandy is actually still haunting Eloise. We see her in the mirror and she's her younger self in the mirror. And Eloise seems okay with it despite the fact that Sandy had tried to kill her. I guess in the end she did let her go and Eloise had lived everything that Sandy had lived. All the horror, all the abuse, so... In the end, she sort of just seemed to be okay with her and we also see her mother in the mirror. So it seems like it's not all like, you know, I see dead people, the sixth sense little boy where he sees dead people everywhere. It seems more like she only sees certain people and her abilities aren't really explained. I felt like that was a little bit of a gap there, like they could have gone a little bit more into that. So we see Anya's version of Downtown, that song Downtown, and it is amazing. Anya Taylor-Joy is definitely a triple threat. She can sing, she can dance, she can act. And when it comes to the cinematography, you know, I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said already with it. It is amazing. It is beautiful. There's this one scene where... Eloise is in one of the dream sequences and she's trying to get Sandy's attention and she smashes through the mirror and I thought that was a really well done scene. The set design, the costumes, the aesthetic of the 60s London was so beautiful with the big James Bond poster and it just felt very true to the time period and 
with all of that technical stuff, they just did so, so well. So probably the only thing that I found bad, well, two things that I found sort of bad, and this is probably just me nitpicking, but okay, logically, Eloise almost murders a classmate. There is a scene where she's freaking out and seeing ghosts and she has a pair of scissors and she's trying to attack a ghost. So she thinks, but she's actually almost stabbing a classmate and then nothing happens. I mean, I get it, the girl was horrible and to bully, but still at the same time, you know, you'd think that she will get expelled. I mean, what is this, Hogwarts? Anyway, so also there's this old man who's been creepy and following Eloise around in modern times and she thinks that it's the pimp Jack and basically he's made out to be really lecherous and not really the nicest person since when Eloise brings up the subject of Sandy he basically says oh she had it coming whatever happened to her and then he ends up dying and we find out it was actually this police officer that we see only in one short scene trying to rescue Sandy and it just doesn't add up like it was an obvious red herring and it just doesn't gel with the fact that he was trying to rescue her and I don't know it just I would have liked it if they had gone a bit more into his character in the past and it feels like it's the sort of thing that might have actually been filmed and left on the cutting room floor to save time or something but it just feels like there might have been more to that story than we saw. And it would be good if they, like, released some sort of director's cut of this. Well, obviously the first cut was the director's cut, but you know what I'm talking about, like an extended edition. And um, in terms of a rating, I would probably give this an 8 out of 10. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of this and if you enjoyed this and you want to see more reviews and other things from me, please subscribe. Thank you.